What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Phantom Games 117 YouTube channel here with episode 2 of Doki Doki Literature Club. Now where we left off we were going to show our very first poem. Sorry for the second episode taking so long to come out. A lot of stuff's been going on the last couple weeks for me. But if Doki Doki is not your thing, I have plenty of other content. I have a Ratchet & Clank series, a Stalker series, a uh, Stardew Valley series, a Minecraft series, a Assassin's Creed 2 series. So i got plenty of content on the channel for you to check out. Make sure to check it out. Anyways, let's get into this. We're going to show Sayori first. I'm definitely most comfortable sharing it with Sayori first. She's my good friend, after all. Okay, I should warn you that I'm going to make you some cringy-ass voices... If you didn't watch episode 1, I make cringy ass voices for the characters that make me want to kill myself when I listen back to them. But, you know, it's fine. I've forgotten their voices though, because it's been a couple weeks since we recorded the first episode, so you're going to have to bear with me here. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh my goodness! This is so good, Phantom! Eh? I love it! I had no idea you are such a good writer! Sayori? You must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. Ah! Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than other, a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem, it's a phantom poem. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> I'm really happy just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Her voice has turned into something else, I'm... Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room? Uh, Alright, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'm more, I'll break my promise. See? Like I said before, Phantom. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people. That's something not only that's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. And I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That'll be my way of thanking you. I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! <laughs> now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub from the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. <laughs> hey. Sayori. This is just a guess, but did you wait till this morning to write this? No? Just a little bit? You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Don't be mean. I still try my best. Yeah. I didn't mean to say it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially the last time. Line. Yeah. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school. It's bad to skip breakfast. <laughs> I get all kink. <laughs> the fuck is this game? <laughs> well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this is so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm going to write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. I guess. It's just a Natsuki. Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. 
That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me! It's not like I said it was bad. It just didn't evoke any emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for your taste. Do you want to get smacked? A little bit. But I'll pass. <sighs> Fucking son of a dumbass. Alright, well anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. <laughs> Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if I could keep it together if she was in front of me in real life. This was a real conversation, this was a real poem, and they handed it to me. I don't know if I can stop myself from laughing. And I know this makes me sound like a dick, but... Come on! <laughs> yeah. I told you you weren't gonna like it. I like it. Yeah, totally. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks their writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly! I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. <laughs> Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, that's actually not bad. Yeah, now that I think about it, it's not a terrible way. I understand. But the other nice thing about writing, simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it all flat on purpose. I was bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro! I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? I uh, guess not. I decided to humor her with the last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Good man. Who would you like to show my poem? To, who should I show my poem to next? Hmm. Let's get Yuri out of the way, cause I have a feeling she's gonna be an ass. Hmm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes more than enough from time for her to finish reading. Um, oh, sorry, I forgot to start speaking. Um, it's fine, don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay, this is your first time writing a poem, right? Yeah, why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that I might be up to reading through it. Ah, so it's bad. No! Yeah, that is what it means. That means it's bad. Sorry. Did I just raise my voice? Uh, I'm sorry. Yuri, Yuri buries herself in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we haven't gone anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine. I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Right, um... It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of a new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I noticed in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both style and the ex expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her is that of oh, Jesus. It's as if her whole demeanor changes. Totally stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing, even a simple poem. Not just finding them and oh Jesus, I'm so sorry. I am not in character. I'm not in character. The end result is that both... Okay, hold on. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There's so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a single poem. 
Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Not so we can be a little biased, though. Biased how? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing for, apologizing for herself to me or to your Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if there's that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Keep her nuts brown. Oh, God. Fucking cursive. Uh... Ghost under the light. The trendles of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last to yet be replaced the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe calm, breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickens, flickers. I flicker back. A lot of that could be wrong. I can't read cursive personally. I have a very hard time with it. Hopefully I got that right though. I'm sorry. I have such terrible handwriting. It's not bad handwriting. It's just handwriting that I can't read. Not in the sense that it's bad handwriting so I can't make it out. But in the sense it's good handwriting with cursive things. And so I can't really make it out. That's... Sorry. I'm rambling. What? I wasn't even thinking that at all. But it took you so long, a long time to read. Ah. Well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I liked the poem. Even though it was short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short? I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about the ghosts at all, Phantom. Get it? Ghost and Phantom? <laughs> really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it, after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem it is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn putting it that way. I hadn't, I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. That's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you like it. You remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. All right. Okay, so I ended the recording. Just uh, my controller battery is running low, and I'm not sure if it's going to corrupt my footage because technically the controller controls the recording or whatever. So just making sure. All right, we're going to show it to Monica next. All right, here we go. Okay, let's show it to Monica. Sorry if you hear my brother in the background, by the way. Hi, Phantom. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever had any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Phantom. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? That's sort of a barrier that we'll all have to learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Hmm. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Oh, she caught on that, huh? She knew that, huh? So she caught on to that. Uh, it was made for Sayori. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? Wouldn't be surprised if you had those sort of things in common. Ah, well. We may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm? 
Well, that may be the case. But maybe there are some... There are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you? Sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when you... When reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. In any case, Siri's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions, like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. I'm sure I'll end up trying. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing that. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> Anyways, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound, very con you sound pretty confident for someone who claims not to be very good. That's because I have to sound confident. It doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Let's read it then. Hole in the wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the sparkle... The spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend, I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. A real blind, I like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas, already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright, it wasn't too deep. It wasn't too bright, it was too deep, stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in, I was looking out. And he on the other side was looking in. Damn, that's philosophical. Damn, I pronounced that wrong. That's definitely, a, that's definitely part of the best poem here. So what do you think? Hmm, it feels very freeform, if that's what you call it. So I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. That was the, what was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that. Because it's kind of coming strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other? Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem, oh Jesus, sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you get, keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big, dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Phew! I guess that's everyone. A glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. But no, bro. I think they all like your poem. Except for Yuri. She did not like that. She can say that she did and that she could tell I was new, but no, that means it was pretty bad, let's be real. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. It's a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. Maya's land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly expect, exchange sheets of paper, sharing their perspective, respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuro smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. 
Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess he could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Here's this cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Phantom did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly interesting and inspiring, which I haven't yet. Mm. And Phantom liked my poem too, you know. And he even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki, Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. The music change? <laughs> Dude, that was brilliant. The music change there. Eh? That's not what I... But... Uh, uh, you're... You're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Phantom appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you full of yourself? No. I was... If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do is overly cutesy. <laughs> um... Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one who whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Phantom started showing up. N Natsuki? Uh, Natsuki, that's a little, um... This doesn't involve you! I, I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turn towards me as if they noticed I was standing there. Phantom. She she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true! She started it! If she could get her over herself and learn to appreciate the simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place! What's the point in writing your poems over all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Phantom. Well, wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey our complex feelings and meaning the most... Mo and meaning most... Uh, the most effectively. I thought that's worded wrong. Avoiding them is not only ne unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Phantom? Um... Well... WELL! Um... How did I get dragged into this in the first place? That's a good question, bro. These girls are fighting over you already, man. God, they all want you, bro. It's not like I know anything about writing. But whomever I agree with will... With, they'll probably think more highly of me. So, of course, that's going to be... Help me, Sayori! No, no, not... Wait, what? Wait! No, no, not Suki. Wait, what? Not so good glares at me, drawing up any words out of my mouth. So instead, I turn to Yuri. Yuri. But Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori! <laughs> eh? Yeah? Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Phantom. Well, that's her problem! This isn't about her! I, I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless if Sayori wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being. She would never. It's your immaturity that made, that's made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why... Exactly why nobody likes... Stop! Natsuki Yuri... You guys are my friends. I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people. Oh, she's staring up. And I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems 
They're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And yours poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? Be because, well, also, Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And yours boobs are the same as they always were. Big and beautiful. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Big and beautiful. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god! Sayori, Sayori stands triumphantly. Monica stands between her with a builder, <laughs> with a bewildered expression. I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. <laughs> oh my god, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> so this is why Sayori is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. I couldn't bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing of me. <laughs> nah, it's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess that just means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's really suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I hate to see her get herself hurt. That makes two of us. You got on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to knot. Such a genuine person really does make a good president regardless of what she says. If only I could get a chance to talk to her a little more. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun! Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright, well, mostly. Phantom, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something from your friends, too. So your problems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with a newfound determination. Phantom! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Sari beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sari and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sari? But what happened earlier? And what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki? Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. You can see why they'd make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Phantom, it's nice that I got to spend time with you in the club. But I think you... I think seeing you get along with everyone else is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Alright, so. I think we're going to make one for Natsuki next. I'm going to end the recording real quick, and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so, let's see. Clouds. Doki Doki. Sing. Bubbles. Silly. Strawberry. Rose. Well, Sari and Natsuki are very similar in the sense of what they like. Heartbeat, smile, 
joy. Damn it. Vanilla. Candy. Puppy. Kitty. Loud. Promise. Um. Excitement. Damn it. Cute. Charm. Son of a. Why? I have no. That's either Sayori or Natsuki. I'm not sure which one got more. I'm assuming Natsuki, but I don't know. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Phantom. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just not. I'm just still not used to you being in the club. That, that's all. I see. That's well, a pretty simple thing to get you in the good mood. But I guess it's always the simplest things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh, why's that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just want to look at it. Eh, uh, Sayori ner nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. She Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Ah, I knew it! I can see right through you, Sayori! That's not fair! How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a sack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk! Or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. Ooh, ah. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means I deserve to feel guilty. I feel like I'm playing Ace Attorney with the Star Log! <laughs> Sorry. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Ah! Uh, I, I wasn't listening or anything. I was just something. It was just something in my book. Yuri. Tell Phantom let me borrow some money. That's, uh. Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can reasonably afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah, uh, did I just... I, I didn't mean that. I just got too absorbed in my book. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's the fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. It, I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revelation. Retribution. That. Still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Siri knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me into the club before she even told me. But, but! You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me a little more credit than that, Siri. I don't think you deserve a little more credit than that, bro. You wouldn't have come without the cupcakes. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> I'm nowhere something smacks Sari in the face and tumbles onto the desk. <laughs> Plap! Yeah! Ow! What was... Eh? A cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sari glances around. Is this a miracle? Is it because I paid my restitution? <laughs> Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you! But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes! It was totally worth seeing your reaction though! <laughs> and then that's the key! That, that's so nice of you! I'm so happy! Sari hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it! Sari rapidly tears op open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good! Mmm! They did a good job with the expressions in this game. 
Sari suddenly clasped her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? <laughs> Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sarah gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie stone hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sari off of her. Um, oh my god. What the fuck am I playing? What the fuck? <laughs> Sari suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sari jumps away to safety. You're gonna laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes! Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Eh? Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. It's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. Of course she's okay! She's probably just... Had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Eh, that's true. Excuse me! <laughs> Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry. I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. Hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. A boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, never mind that. Well, what held you up anyway? Ah, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Phantom. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah. I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ah, uh -huh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share one once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Nah, not really. <laughs> I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Phantom! Phantom! Sayori suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna get some supplies from the other classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival's coming up? Me and Monica were gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Uh, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Uh, are you going with Phantom to get supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Uh, but I wanted to go! It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. Uh, okay, okay. It was just a, it was just a suggestion. Bro, all four ladies want my man Phantom, okay? They all want him, okay? She just tried to kick Sari out so that she could go with me instead. And we all know why. Because she wants some. Sounds really weird to talk about high school girls like this. 
I did just graduate high school basically though, so I guess it's not too weird, but at the same time it's weird. Anyways, see if you can find post your paper too, okay? Okay. Ready, Phantom? Yep, let's go. Sayori and I Sayori and I exit the classroom. I follow behind as Sayori hums, skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm talking to a kid, taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey Sayori, what exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. Eh, <laughs> me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're going to do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is going to take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah, that sounds kind of dull. Phantom, you're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems, it's about performing them. Like you said the lines of the poem like, Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, bring it from its... Oh, God. Sorry, I burped. Bring it from its clinging roots. I caressly, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. To what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in a every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that! Sorry, how do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh? You meanie? I'm, I'm working super hard on this, you know? I, I know, I know. I just meant that it's pretty unordinary in contrast to your cute self. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't say that. It's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. I'm so excited. The festival is going to be so much fun. Siri spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, Phantom. This classroom over here is empty. Let's begin with the mission. The mission, eh? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sayori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room and more and more. So going adventuring with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. That's nice. The two of us enter the classroom. Siri heads straight to the closet and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Siri pulls a box of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand too. They're kind of dirty though. Siri starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. All right, that's one down. Don't get distracted, we still need to find. Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. <clears throat> then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Ah, I dropped Bond by accident. Smack! Yeah! Siri bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. She falls on the floor and cramps below all over her lap. Ow, 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 ow! You okay? My forehead! Siri clutches her forehead. Gee, Sayori, that's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist, pull her out, off the closet, out of the closet. You have to move your hand, Sayori. But it hurts. Do it for a second. Okay. All right. So, um, <laughs> let me see here. Oh, okay, there we go. I am taking a screenshot of this for the thumbnail. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. Sayori slowly releases her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow! Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's going to swell up. I should find you some ice. Phantom! Where would I even find ice around this time? I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to! I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. 
You were wincing from the pain. Sayori makes a silly joke. <laughs> what are you saying? Be right back, okay? Okay. I pat Sayori on the shoulder and run into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter since it would be used as an ice pack rather than a drink. But I know Sayori likes apple juice, so I'll purchase that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop grands back into the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sorry. <clears throat> At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sayori, here. And Sayori with a bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Sayori opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah. Uh, sorry, I forgot. Uh, how hard did you hit your head? Sari places the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings. Just bear with it. I'll be better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Phantom. This kind of reminds me reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Eh, what do you mean? You know, we used to play outside all the time. I would always try and... <clears throat> I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I usually fall behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I wouldn't, I would start crying really hard. Uh -huh. And you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost as if like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. <clears throat> I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. Some way it was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Phantom, I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're, all, you're rushing to help me even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. Don't call me that. I really don't... And I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've become been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right, Phantom. Looks like that nothing's changed between us. You think it'll be like it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll end up each end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises, but Well I hope so. It's been it's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Siri has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should get back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's going to see her forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Yeah, that's pretty hidden. Sari hops to her feet. Ah! She clutches her forehead again. Let's stand up so fast if you're hurting yourself. Ugh. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyways, let's go. I follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs and try to try to hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club. Ah, you're back. Good timing. I was just about ready to start sharing our poems. Ah, Sayori, your forehead. She's fine. Don't worry about I was playing with the crowns and smacked my forehead into the shelf. Well, anyway, were you able to find everything we needed? Uh-huh, I have it right. Eh! Sarah frantically glances around herself. I forgot all the stuff! Calm down, Sarah. I have it all right here. Found the poster paper, too. Uh Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Phantom. Ah, well, Sarah. I thought I'd come up with an excuse for Sarah. I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. <laughs> Uh, okay. 
In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should grab mine. After making sure the crown box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Who should I share my poem to first? No one, because that's it for this episode. If you did enjoy this episode of Doki Doki Literature Club, make sure to slap the like button and subscribe. I really appreciate all the support. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, we have a lot of other stuff you can watch on the channel. Make sure to check it all out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. I am out. Peace, guys.